In this video, we will look at recursion within functions. Something that you might have seen in last video was that we talked about functions and let bindings and where bindings and if, but we didn't talk about loops like while loops or for loops. That's because they do not exist in Haskell. There are no loops. So if you want something to loop in a sense, you have to use recursion. So a function calling itself with some other arguments or maybe even the same arguments, even though that wouldn't make much sense. So this is the basic boilerplate of how recursion looks like. Let's look in, uh, at an example, the prime example for recursion, which is the faculty function. Now, in this case, we say that, okay, the faculty of n uh, smaller or equal to 1 should be 1. And otherwise, we have this recursive call. We say that the definition of the faculty of n is n times the faculty of n minus 1. That is also the mathematical definition of the faculty. If we look at how the evaluation works, we see it works sort of as expected. The faculty of 3 is, of course, 3 times the faculty of 2, and so on and so forth. And this is how you can recursively, um, well, compute the faculty, but also compute anything. It's very important to know that there are different ways of writing this sort of if-then-else. Uh, you don't have to use if-then-else, and it's important to understand that if-then-else is just another expression. But another way of writing a function that has to have different functionality based on some Boolean expression can be done with guards. The good thing about guards is that you cannot just have two, but if you want three, four, five, or any other finite number of guards. In this case, a guard has to have some Boolean expression, like n is smaller or equal to one. And the first Boolean expression, the first guard, which evaluates to true, will be the one taken as the definition for the function for any function application. So we see here that we can just rewrite this if then else as guards. Now it might be interesting to know what this otherwise is. This otherwise is just a constant which always evaluates to true. So that is why this last guard, this otherwise guard is always taken because it always evaluates to true. Another way of doing a very similar thing is pattern matching. Now, for integers, pattern matching is not that interesting, like we can see here. What we're saying is that, well, is zero of zero is true, and otherwise, um, this other case matches. So what does that mean? Well, we will look at pattern matching a bit uh, more extensively in a later video, but here, what you have to understand is that this underscore means we have a wildcard. This means that any pattern that can arise uh, will match at this point. So here, we have two definitions of this is zero, just based on different patterns. In another language, you might say, well, this is a duplicate function definition. We have two definitions of the function, but this isn't true in Haskell. Since the pattern, of course, makes this function um, partial, since is zero of zero only works for the value of zero. So we need this other definition with the wildcard where we can say, well, if the definition of is zero for zero doesn't work, for example, because we called is zero of one, then this other definition holds. Another way of implementing recursive functions is with accumulators. Now, in this case, we say that the faculty function is the result of an auxiliary function, aux. This auxiliary function takes another argument called ACC, or ACC, which is our accumulator. Now, in an accumulator, you can, of course, accumulate some result, and that's what's being done here. So what we're saying is that, well, if n is smaller or equal to 1, we do not return 1, but the accumulator, whatever our result at that point is. Otherwise, we, of course, update n with n minus 1 and then compute the intermediate result or the result we just get to that point by multiplying the accumulator we had with n. Now... The question is, why would we do this and why is it helpful? Well, let's look at what the definitions of this auxiliary function are. In the first case, n is smaller or equal to 1, we return a constant. 
This is a constant, it at least is a constant value, since that is what our auxiliary function gets anyways. So this definition is no problem, we just return the value ACC that we got in the function call. The other possibility is to do a direct recursive call where we have no operation after it. Think about how we defined the faculty function before. We said that we take n and multiply it by whatever the result of the faculty n minus 1 is. So we did the recursive call and then did a computation. That is not what we do here because we compute n minus 1 and then we compute n times ACC and we throw that into the recursive call. So this is what we call a tail recursive function since it has no operation after it's a recursive call anymore. This is very important because uh, clever compilers can basically rewrite such a function as an imperative function, for example, with a while true loop. So in this case, uh, it does the recursion uh, in quotes, basically, with a while true loop. And if we have the um, condition that n is smaller or equal to 1, we can return the accumulator. And otherwise, we update n and we update the accumulator and just continue. Because this is what we're essentially doing when we're using auxiliary functions without having any operation after the recursive call. It is very important to note that tail recursive algorithms are what we should always strive for. Non-tail recursive algorithms can cause a stack overflow because for every, uh, for every recursive call you do, you have to put a new stack frame on the stack. Now, the stack only has finite amount of memory, so the amount of recursive loops you can do is finite. Now, this is not something we want because sometimes we want to have a, an algorithm that actually can loop to infinity if it wants, um, like we do here, because we do not want our faculty function to be bounded by the size of our stack. Now, this implementation wouldn't be bounded by our stack because a clever compiler can optimize this function to be imperative where we don't even need a stack anymore because we call the function only once and then we end up in this while true loop. So those are the basics of functions and recursive functions. Most algorithms in Haskell are recursive, so it's very important to get to know them and to understand how to construct these recursive algorithms.